Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make side-by-side -side 3D in Final Cut Pro. This is the finished product here, and I'll give you a little bit of a preview of what we'll be making. Right, so in order to get to this point, first, I'm going to delete everything, and we're going to start off by creating a bin, which we'll be storing our source material from our camera from. Option, sorry, Command B, we'll open a bin, and we'll call that Source. Right, we're going to drag in these source files from our camera. We've got a left eye and a right eye. Then we're going to create our sequence. And we'll call that Mountain Road, side by side, so that it matches the name of our source material. Open up that sequence and we'll start by dragging in the right eye. This is going to be our bottom layer of video. We're going to apply an effect to that first. We'll open it up in our viewer so we see what we're doing to it. Come down to video filters from the effects menu in the channels. We're going to select the channel mixer. Now if we choose our filters tab in our viewer, we want to eliminate all of the red in that layer of video. So now we've got a very turquoise blue right eye. What we're going to do now is come back to our source bin, drag down the left eye. Now, making sure that left eye is opened in our viewer again, you see we've come back to a full color image because we haven't applied any effects to it yet. We'll choose the channel mixer, which was our last effect. And again, in our filters tab, this time we want to eliminate the blue and the green. We want a very red image on our left eye. So we're going to eliminate the green and the blue, put that back to zero. Now we'll look at our frame. We'll see that they both match, both our viewer and our canvas match because we're still only looking at the top layer of video. We'll change that by right clicking on the left layer of video from the composite mode, choose add. This now gives us a very poorly aligned anaglyph 3D image in our canvas viewer. Now, in order to correct that, we want to first select from this little menu at the top of the canvas window, image and wireframe. So you can see now we've got this cross through the middle of our footage. What we want to do now is zoom in on our canvas, first click on it so it's the focus of the next action, then command and plus, that will help us zoom in. Again, while we're doing this we want to make sure that we always click on the frame of video so that it is what we're doing things to. Now if we hold down the option key and use the arrows, you can reposition the frame of video or the layer that you've got highlighted in your timeline. And what I'm trying to do here is to eliminate any blue and red fringing or as much of it as possible so that we get a very clean image. If we zoom out now, as you can see, there's much less red and blue ghosting around the outside of objects, but at the top and the bottom of frame, we have this more underlap at the top and overlap at the bottom. And we're going to correct that now. First, we're going to double click on the left eye, choose the motion tab. We're going to set the size to 103%. We're going to repeat that for the right eye, set the size to 103%. So now, if we highlight, if we click on both of our images, shift click, both of our layers of video you'll see in the canvas that we actually have less underlap at the top but we have more than enough room to move to try and correct that problem so again we click inside the canvas hold down the option key and then i'm using the up arrow here to just reposition that slightly to the point that i can see the black edge of the frame now i've got a little bit of occlusion at the left of frame here where there's an object poking into frame so I'm going to hold down the option key and move it slightly to the left and now I've got very clean anaglyph 3D footage in my canvas. What we've done is we've basically lined up the footage. We're now one by one I'm going to highlight double click on the left eye, choose the filters tab, highlight the filter and delete it right click on that same layer of video from the composite mode set that back to normal 
double click on the right eye at the bottom layer, delete that channel mixer, and I'm going to set this back to just image. So now we've lined up our footage, we've removed the channel mixers, and we're ready to make side by side stereo pairs. Now, if we first highlight the top channel, and from the sequence menu, we're going to select nest items. The reason we're doing this, if we come back to our canvas viewer, we'll see that there's a little bit of overlapping image at the side of the frame here. If we were to move that frame around, or if we were to drag, squish it to either side of the frame, we'd be revealing information from outside of the frame. We want to eliminate that. We just want to mat that at the frame border. So we'll choose sequence, nest items. I'm going to call this one mountain road left nested. I'm going to do that again for the right eye. Highlight it, select it, choose nest items. Name it as nested. Now, what that's done is it's created two new sequences. In our browser, we want to create a new bin to store them in, just to keep it neat. We'll call them nest. We'll drag this one down to here, and the same for the matching eye. So that's keeping everything nice and neat and tidy. Now what we can do with these nested sequences is we can manipulate them with a motion tab. But to do it, there's a, there's a bit of a trick. You have to right click on the layer, choose open in viewer. Now it's appeared in my viewer window. If I click on the motion tab, I do in fact have motion controls for those nested sequences. Now that's the left eye, so we want to bring across the upper right to zero and the lower right to zero. Now we're going to repeat that for the right eye, but we're going to be moving the upper left and the lower left corner, and we're going to move them to zero. Now, basically, there you have it. You have a side-by-side -side stereo pair, which can be output directly to an MP4 file or a QuickTime. You could upload it to YouTube. You could also continue working in, for instance, ProRes. You could output it to a low-quality or a high-quality ProRes, depending on your workflow. Another thing you can do, because we've kept those nested sequences, is if for any reason, later down the track, you realize that the images aren't quite converged or aligned properly, you can come back to your nested sequences here, and I'll just show you quickly. You could double click on the left eye. You could choose image and wireframe. You could actually move that slightly, and we'll do that so that we reveal that image, that little object that we removed earlier. Now, if I go back to my final output, you can see that's now reintroduced that image on the left side. This is just to show you that, oh, I'll undo that now. This is just to show you that if you need to, you can come back to those nested sequences and adjust your footage. Now, I'm not going to go into grading or any other kinds of effects here, but I'll just point out that this whole process can be repeated for multiple shots. You could create a number of bins, which you store, for instance, the nested and source footage in, and you could keep a separate bin for your final sequences here. Because as you, you'll see now, if I create another sequence, and we'll call it an edit, and I open that sequence up, I can drag in my side-by-side -side stereo pair. Yes, we want to match. And I can edit it like a single layer of video. And with a bit of rendering, that can be played on the timeline, or output in an edit. I hope this helps.